Welcome back to Tennis Channel Live, and don't forget to get out the vote. That is for the Tennis Hall of Fame, of course, and in general, but let's start with the Tennis Hall of Fame. This is the last day to be voting for the nominees, and it actually leads us into our next segment, but we do want to remind you, last day to get out the vote, and it's now time to play on the line. No Eagle Chanda, Ruben, Nico Pereira with you here on TC Live. It, the, the get out the vote idea does lead us to our first topic here on on the line, because Leighton Hewitt is actually leading the fan vote and is very close to clinching a spot in the, and being inducted into the Tala Ten International Tennis Hall of Fame next July. So, the first one on the line, and just for everybody who hasn't seen us play this before, I will kind of give them a sentence with a little bit of a blank. They will fill in the blank on the line. So, I'm going to start with Chanda. I'm, gonna, I'm like, eh, which way am I going to go? There. I know, I'm a little fake, <laughs> a little snake eyes. Uh, Chanda, Layton Hewitt's blank was the key to his success. His fight. Mm. Anytime it got tough, he got tougher. And the nastier the matchup was, the more he liked it. And that certainly was a big key for him. You chose fight, I choose grit, which is basically <laughs> the same. And this kid at 16, he would come and bully 24, 25-year-old grown man into the ground, winning titles. And talk about winning Wimbledon, winning the U.S. Open in doubles, becoming world number one. This guy had just no quit in him, and that's what made him so great. All right. I, if I were me, if it were me here, I would have said backwards. Had. So this this shows you the level of insight these two possess, and that's why I'm here just hosting. Okay, we'll move on to the second one. Kana Shakori gave an interview recently, and he ranked the most powerful forehands he ever faced. Number three was Fernando Gonzalez. Number two, Rafa Nadal. Number one, Juan Martin Del Potro. So we'll start with Nico this time. <laughs> Blank had the most powerful forehand you ever faced. Oh, Ivan Lendl. No, no question. I, I was not lucky enough to play against these youngsters by Ivan Lendl. Every, there were tournaments that every time he touched it with the racket, he would make the ball disappear. It, it was just a thing of beauty, and, and I think that's what made him so great. Understated serve. Nobody talked about Ivan's first serve, but the forehand was, was a weapon. Hmm. I'll say Steffi Graf. Okay. Stephanie Graf now. Yeah. <laughs> she she had she could do it all with the forehand and she could go either direction uh, with the same look and it, and it was it was big. It was pretty powerful. Serena, I would say, you know, in terms of being able to just add pace from nothing, but definitely Steffi Graf. Right. Two good answers. So I, I like where we're going. We've got two down. We've got another one here. A couple more actually. Let's flash, flash back first to 2019 Lynch final. Coco Goff getting her maiden title on the WTA Tour. This was a year ago. Goff getting past Ostapenko in the final, and news has come out from Coco and her team that she will not be there to defend her title this year. And Of course, look, 2020 has been strange for everybody, but Coco is certainly towards the top of that list. She had a great start to 2020, and then the hiatus, and then she was trying to figure some things out. Still played very well, all things considered. But we'll start with Chanda. Coco's Goff, Coco Goff's, man, I'm, I'm all over the place, right? Her great is a blank for 2020. You know, I would say a B, a B plus. Uh, you know, it's been a tough year for everybody, and certainly for for Coco, she was expecting to come out this year and you know turn 16, be able to play more tournaments, a fuller schedule, and that just hasn't materialized. She's probably had to make one of the biggest adjustments being a young player. And you consider the players she's lost to this year. It's been some tough matches, winners of you know Grand Slams and Kennan, and winners of tournaments. Lexington lost to Brady. You know, she's had you know some high points, and I think she can build on. I'm sorry, Chanda, but I'm going to have to give her an A+. Plus because she's 16, all of those things you say, it's been fantastic, her handling the pressure, being able to play at this level, and anybody that's been playing tennis, anybody that's been out there traveling with all the difficulties deserves an A, but this young lady, the future of the game, of the women's game, in, in to a great degree here in the United States, is able to handle the pressure and come up with some great performances, so I, I, I'll pass her, definitely. And, and I have to add on to that, Nico, her, also her willingness to speak out, stand up for totally. social injustice. Yeah. I mean, that was huge. And at 16, to have the wherewithal to be able to do that, and I mean, it was tremendous. So definitely, I will you know, concede to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get a boost in the grades. You got extra credit at the end. Good for you, Coco. And keep doing your schoolwork, by the way. I remember she was saying biology, English, still currently in those classes. Uh, let's flash back another last year file. This one is in Antwerp. Listen in. Andy Murray away from the game for so long, and here he is trying to find a way back. Andy 
Murray, victorious in Antwerp. It is so great to see Andy Murray back in the winner's circle. Andy Murray certainly looks a little bit different than he did when he was younger. Chanda sounds exactly the same, which is always a good thing. Uh, Murray wins last year, his title coming back. Just an incredible story, and we know all about it. But, Nico, Andy Murray's future now in tennis is blank. On his own terms. I think that's what a champion deserves, and that's what he got through grit and determination coming back after such a horrific injury, having the surgery, and he has nothing else to prove, nothing else to win. Wimbledon's gold medals, U.S. Opens, world number ones, but I'm happy he's going to get to do it on his own terms at his own time, and he already even won a title. Mm. I literally said it's his to decide. I mean, Nico, <laughs> what, what, what's going on here? <laughs> but, yeah, I think, it, I mean, you said it all. Not much to add to that when you consider everything he's accomplished. He certainly deserves, you know, every opportunity to go out the way he feels he needs to. Hopefully he can be closer to 100% healthy. That may be tough. But at the end of the day, it's just been great to see him back out and hopefully enjoying his tennis and he can continue to do so. A great champion, another great face for the sport with love. Love to call a match with him one day. Hopefully that can happen. Andy, we're talking to you. We're, we're, we're putting the thoughts in your head. Do it on your own terms. Both of them said it, but, you know, join us whenever you want. Anyway, talking about Antwerp, that was last year's final. We've got semifinal action to take you through when we return on TC Live.